Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel. This is the second episode of the video series, on how to make games from scratch for the Windows console. All programs are written in C++, using my consoler game framework. So if you missed the previous part, I highly recommend to watch it. In today's video, I'm going to show more complex examples. We will see how to display an image, print text using bitmap fonts, and use sprites. Then we will learn how to make animations, and detect collisions between sprites. Keep watching! Let's get started with an example, that displays an image at the command prompt. This is an original drawing, painted by 6-year-old Julia. To display this image in the console, it must be converted to a series of bytes, where each byte represent the nearest console color of a single pixel. So I made a special image conversion tool using SFML library, which does this dirty job. To use it, I run a batch script passing the image name as an argument. <laughs> as we see, the tool converts the original image into two binary files, using two different algorithms. In this case, we will take the second image for our demo, as it looks closer to the original. So, let's write the code now. At first, we create a new sprite object. Then we load the converted image into the sprite, passing its width and height. The sprite is invisible by default, so let's make it visible. Finally, let's draw the sprite. Oh, very nice. Now, let's print some text using bitmap fonts. Here is a set of large fonts, each with a size of 7 by 9. Here is a set of small fonts, where each one is 5 by 7. Since both sets are bitmap images, they must be converted to binary format, as we saw in the previous demo. To use the prepared fonts in our program, we create new sprite objects. We also set the black color as transparent for both sprites. Next, we load the sprite fonts by defining the width and height of each single frame. Finally, we set the text properties, and then we can write our novel on the console screen. This statement sets the large fonts, with center alignment, zero spacing, and white color on blue background. This statement changes the text color, to black on yellow background. Let's add more text. But let's change the spacing to get a condensed print. And let's set the red foreground, with no background color. Let's add even more interesting text. But let's use the small font now, displayed in the green color. We will now use the large fonts again, and display the left aligned text in cyan color. Then we will display the right aligned text in gray color. And we will display the center aligned text in magenta color. Now, let's increase the spacing, and set the yellow color on a dark gray background. Finally, let's add a copyright signature at the bottom. Wow, we made a pretty nice title screen. The next few examples, illustrate the advanced use of sprite objects. So, let's add this tree to the game scene. After converting it to the appropriate image format, we initialize a new sprite object with black transparency. We then load the sprite defining its size. After that, we set its position on the screen, and make it visible. Finally, we draw the sprite. Let's add two more trees, by scaling the original one. The new sprite is now a copy of the original sprite. Let's change its position. And then let's make it bigger, by scaling up its width two times, and the height three times. In the same way, we create the smaller tree by copying the original one and scaling it down. Finally, let's draw the new trees. Now, let's add a flappy bird to enrich the game scene. Unlike the previous sprites, this one consists of three frames, so we can animate it. As usual, we create a new sprite object, now with blue transparency. Then we load it, defining the size of a single frame. Now, we can add a new animation to the sprite object. This is the key name of the animation. These are the frame numbers that form the animation sequence. And this is the time in milliseconds, between playing two frames. Let's add another animation, which consists only of the frame number 2. In the same way, we can add countless animations to each sprite. Next thing is to set the current animation for the sprite. Here we need to pass the key name of that animation. The last thing is to set the position, and visibility of the bird. Now before drawing the bird, we can animate it by playing the current animation. Well, our bird flutters its wings, but it doesn't move. So, let's create control keys, to move the bird in four directions. To get the current status of the keys, we need to handle all user inputs at the beginning of the main loop. To move the bird in the desired direction, its velocity must be reset at first. Then we calculate a new speed value, using the elapsed time between two cycles. 
Now, according to the pressed keys, we set the new bird velocity vector. Finally, we call the update position function, to calculate the new bird position using its current velocity. As we see, the bird is now flying around by pressing the cursor keys. The last today's example shows, how to check collisions between the bird and the trees. We will use the bitmap text, to print out the collision status. To detect a collision, we simply use a consoler function, that checks if the sprite rectangles overlap. This function is fast but not so accurate, since it also takes transparent pixels into account. Another option is to use a function, that checks if the non-transparent pixels of both sprites overlap. This method is completely accurate, but more expensive. As we see, collision detection based on overlapping sprite rectangles is not completely accurate, as it also consider transparent pixels. Instead, checking every pixel of both sprites is 100% accurate, but slower. In the next episode, we will be polishing our game, to make it look even more professional. For instance, we will implement different game states, like splash screen, gameplay and game over states. We will also add a pause dialog, and see how to change the current console configuration, by using built-in function keys. Finally, we will add sound effects. So stay tuned, and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. That way, you don't miss out on more actionable videos like this one. If you have any feedback or suggestions, please let me know by leaving a comment. And if you find today's video interesting, please like it. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Bye.